with another video this week about the Hover Air X1 Pro. And let me start by apologizing because in my previous video, I was pronouncing it as Hoover Air X1 Pro. I apologize to the manufacturer, Zero Zero Robotics, for mispronouncing um, the name of this great product that they have created, the Hover Air X1 Pro. I was calling it a Hoover, and I'll try not to make that mistake again. So let's get started. This video is all about dolly track mode. Dolly track mode is when the drone's in front of the user and it's filming the front of the user as they, as they use the product. Um, I tried all nine settings um, on dolly track mode for height and for distance from the user. The heights can be high, flat shot, or low, and the distances are far, mid, and close. And also I'll tell you which is my favorite combination to use and which is my least favorite combination to use in this video. So without much delay, let's get started. When using dolly track mode, it's best to go in a straight line instead of turning. When you turn like I did in this video, the drone swung way out and started following me from behind. The following from me from behind isn't bad, but the swing out was very scary. I thought it was gonna crash into one of those houses. This clip is of dolly track mode at low height setting and close distance. I got some things I like about this view and some things I don't like. What I like about it, it shows the details of the user much clearer because the drone's flying up closer to you. The drone's probably flying about four feet in front of me and it's probably about two to three feet from the ground. Dolly track set at low height and close distance is my least favorite setting and that's due to it doesn't seem to track well the faster you go. When I got around about 15 to 17 miles per hour the drone swung behind me because um, I was just moving faster than what it was moving. I think it has a lot to do with the closeness of the drone to the user. This clip is of dolly track set at flat height and close distance. The drone flies probably about four to five feet off the ground. I would say it flies somewhere between the height of your eyes and the bottom of your neck. It flies about that distance off the ground. And like I said before, close distance is about four feet in front of the user. Seemed like the drone did a lot of bouncing around in front of me set at this height. This is a clip of dolly track set at high height and close distance. High height is about a foot or two above the head of the user. And as I said earlier, close distance is about four feet in front of the user. If I'm going to film at close distance, I believe high height is my preferred view. Overall, close distance is my least favorite setting in Dolly Track. It has its advantages, like you can see my face in more detail and you can see my clothes in more detail. But I don't like the faster you go, you're likely to overtake the drone and it's going to swing behind you and start recording from behind when it's up close. This is a clip of dolly track set at low height and medium distance. Low height is about two to three feet from the ground and medium distance is probably between six to eight feet in front of the user. Only thing I don't like about this shot is it does not have the entire bicycle in the frame. Like it only has half of the front tire. I would like to see the whole front tire and a little bit of the pavement in front of the bicycle for the perfect shot. In a few seconds, you will see the drone swing from in front of me to behind me. And that's because I sped up. I'm going about 15 to 16 miles per hour. The drone doesn't seem to handle tracking that well in dolly track when the height is set at low, especially as the speed increases. This is a clip of dolly track set at flat height and medium distance. At flat height, the drone appears to fly somewhere between the bottom of your neck and the eye level of the user. And like I said, medium distance is probably about six to eight feet in front of the user. Oh 
This is a clip of dolly tracks set at high height and medium distance. Like I said earlier in the video, high height appears to be between one to two feet above the head of the user and medium distance is about six feet in front of the user. This is a clip of dolly tracks set at low height and far distance. Like I said earlier, low height is somewhere between two to three feet above the ground, and far distance appears to be somewhere between eight to 10 feet in front of the user. Far distance is my favorite setting to use on dolly track because I can see the entire bicycle and a little bit of the pavement in front of the front tire. If you're using dolly tracks set at the low height setting, Far distance appears to be the best combination to go with low height compared to mid and close distance. It appears that the drone can maintain the speed of tracking at far distance better than it can at mid and close. I'm going about 15 miles per hour right now and it maintained the tracking without swinging behind me. This is a clip of dolly track set at flat height and far distance. At flat height, like I said earlier, it appears to fly somewhere between the bottom of the neck of the user and the eyes of the user and far distance is somewhere between probably 8 to 10 feet in front of the user. This is a clip of dolly track set at high height and far distance. This is my favorite combination of settings. I think this is the safest setting to be on because it flies a foot or two above the head of the user, which would normally be above the top of most vehicles. And also you get the best shot in terms of, you can see the entire bicycle, the bottom of the front tire, and a little bit of pavement in front of the bicycle. And also appears that this setting allows for the drone to fly at the maximum speed. I'm testing the maximum speed of dolly track mode and I have it set on high height and far distance. It tracked very well up to about 22 miles per hour. I think it was very stable at 22 miles per hour. It wasn't doing a lot of bouncing around left and right. But when I reached 23 miles per hour, it started swinging out to my right side and at 25 miles per hour, it lost track of me. I would estimate the maximum speed in dolly track mode is somewhere between 22 to 25 miles per hour. There are three things that I've learned from testing dolly track mode on the Hover Air X1. The first one is you need to continue in a straight path if you want the camera to stay in front of you on dolly track mode. If you turn left or right, the camera is going to swing behind you and start following from behind and record you from behind, which is not a bad view or bad shot, but if you want it to stay in front of you, you got to go in a straight line. The second thing I learned from dolly track mode is the worst setting if you're trying to track at faster speeds is at low distance from the ground. At low distance from the ground, it seems to track somewhere between 15 to 17 miles per hour seems to be the maximum speed. You start exceeding that speed, the camera is gonna swing from in front of you and go behind you and start tracking from behind again. Um, and the third thing that I learned is that maximum speed in dolly track mode is somewhere between 22 to 25 miles per hour. And that's what it said at medium distance from the user or far distance from the user. I don't think it would go 22 to 25 if I had it set at close distance to the user or at low distance to the user. So you definitely want to have it at medium and far, and you definitely not want it at low distance if you're trying to reach the maximum speed in dolly track mode. So that's all I have to say about dolly track mode. I'll probably do another video in another week or two about side track mode, testing the maximum speed in side track mode and showing the nine different options in terms of the views you can have while you're recording in side track mode. Well, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.